So the other day, I was nonchalantly scrolling through Instagram when I came across this post by 10 and 2 Media. Wow, I did not know this was a thing. And I may just have pre-ordered the Ryu. Hello folks and welcome back to Wanderer Watches. So this release by Seiko brings me right back to my youth when I spent all my pocket money in Caesars Palace, a pokey little arcade in town on Street Fighter 2. Now, I was less a skilled fighter than I was a button masher and I was often killed while trying to pull off a Hadouken or a Sonic Boom. But that was the beginning of my history with Street Fighter 2. I later bought the game on Sega Mega Drive and more recently, I was experimenting with the Shadow subscription gaming service I bought Street Fighter V from Steam. And I only got it because it was on sale, but it turned out to be one of my favorites once again. So obviously I'm a huge fan of Seiko. So with this collaboration, I'm super excited and have already pre-ordered the Ryu, which of course I review once I receive it. And I believe that some ADs have already received stock, but it's the premiere on the 26th of September. So I won't receive it until after that. I guess that's just the Seiko rules. And for those who are curious, I pre-ordered it from Julier Coloman, Chrono24. Now what I find really interesting about this release is the Marmite reaction on social media. I've seen many comments on Facebook, What You Seek and Instagram saying that this is a release for kids. Now I disagree for a couple of reasons. Firstly, this is a release that taps into that gaming nostalgia that watch collectors may have. Also. I can't really see kids forking out 450 euro plus shipping for an automatic watch, regardless of the theme. I think this is aimed squarely at the 30 to 45 year old market who have fond memories of playing Street Fighter. Now I've also seen the watch called a fashion watch. Now Daniel Wellington is a fashion watch, but really, aren't most watches fashion watches? I mean, how many Submariner owners actually use it for going submarine? It's actual intended use. Finally, these are fun watches. They're different from the norm and they're based on a theme. And I guess they're the realization of the obvious business plan that Seiko intended with the new Seiko 5 sports range or 5KX as it's come to be known. And that was to create a base watch that could be easily themed and used in collaborations like this one with Capcom. It's such a fun idea and I love it. And it has the result of introducing maybe some people to an automatic in-house mechanical movement where they might otherwise have gone for the old DW. Are they expensive? Well, yeah, I guess they are. Initially anyway, 450 euro, it's around double the current asking price for the current range of 5KXs. But these are limited edition. And if experience tells us anything, it's that Seiko limited editions tend to hold their value. For example, look at the Zimbe Turtle range or the Samurai Blue Lagoon, or for that matter, even the Blue Alpinist that was released last year, all have held or gone up in value. Now I do think the Ryu and Ken are probably going to sell out faster. They'll certainly sell out faster than the Blanket and Zangief. I think I may get that completely wrong, it's complete sermonization on my part. Now, which is another thing I love about this watch. It caters to a lot of tastes and seems to have a kind of a an incremental loudness slash extravagance factor as you go through the range. What I mean by that is that beginning with the Ryu, this is probably the most standard, you know, acceptable looking piece in the range. And at a glance, it may not be associated with the game, but as you go through the range, they get bolder and louder with the green blanket 
and the red whirlwind Zangief at the top of that old extravagance meter. There are different aesthetics here too, with a regal looking Chun-Li, a very field oriented guile with those Arabic indices, very reminiscent of a field watch. And then you've got the more traditional diver looking Ryu, which of course, having pre-ordered it, is obviously my personal favorite. So taking a closer look at the Ryu, I love the design cues here. The dial and strap are inspired by Ryu's classic doji judo uniform and are both textured to resemble that of the textures of the doji. And you've heard the phrase, everybody's heard the phrase faux patina seems to be on every watch at the moment, but this bezel has faux scratches on it to reflect all the hours Ryu has spent in the gym to become a true fighter. At the nine o'clock, we have the iconic Forin Kazan kanji characters on Ryu's gloves, which signify as swift as the wind, as gentle as a forest, as fierce as a fire, and as unshakable as a mountain. And with all that going on, the hour indices are still something very reminiscent of those on a classic 62 mass or Seiko 6105 Willard. In fact, I think the indices and the texture dial look fantastic here. And I've never had a Coke bezel. And I've always been on the lookout for a white dial diver. So this will satisfy you know, all of those requirements. And now for the absolute best bit in my honest opinion. On the see-through case back on the back, we have the controller command for the famous Hadouken. Oh, How cool is that? And finally, the leather strap has the kanji characters for wind, forest, fire, and mountain. So all said, I think these are really cool and unique releases from Seiko. Just something different. And I realize they may not be for everyone. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. You know, do you think that they're kids watches? Do you think they're too fashion oriented? They're too, you know, out there from left field? Or do you think they're just really cool, fun watches worth the price? And on that note, do you think that they'll go up in value or sustain value? Will they sell out? Or will ADs be trying to, you know, shift stock for, for months and years to come? And we're actually going to see a reduction in price. Let me know in the comments below. Good luck, everyone. Ben.